I think as a whole, I think the Premier League should be quite grateful for Liverpool at the moment because without us, it would be a one horse race every season. Yeah. What about the referees as well, Callum? <laughs> you don't have to go there as well. <laughs> what is it with Maguire is celebrating like he's the coldest man on earth, by the way? Every time he scores a goal, his celebrations are like he's a Mbappe. I look, I, honestly. If I'm on the board at Chelsea, I'm thinking we might as well cash in as soon as we can, try and recoup some of the money and then go for another striker, in my opinion. I think Harry Kane's going to come into form now, though. And who've they got next? Burnley. Of course they've got Burnley next, of course they have. Just have a look. If I'm Leicester, I'm probably looking at Graham Potter. Interesting. Ooh, I would interesting. love that. I would love yeah, that. Yeah, just, yeah. just so he gets away from Brighton, because I just think that <laughs> that guy is so talented. I tell you what, if that does happen, I'm calling it now. He'll be at Leeds next season. I think he'll be a good fit for Leeds. I think Bielsa will walk at the end of the season. Ooh. Brendan Rodgers at Leeds. Wow. <laughs> oh, I like that take. Big wow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't go for Conor Gallagher because that's the... Oh, nah, no, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not propaganda. You, right? The yeah, first did. time on the show, <laughs> D hasn't given Conor Gallagher propaganda and then someone else has done it anyway. <laughs> you see that, Joe? He wouldn't even let me <laughs> yeah. take on Reed. You can't let me. I'm not going to say it as well. <laughs> no. Welcome back to another episode of Fan Zone, the Premier League talk show for the fans, by the fans. And in today's episode, we're joined by Crystal Palace fan D from Back of the Nest, Burnley fan Joe from the Turfcast podcast, and my name is Callum from Team Coppish. How are you boys doing today? Yeah, good, thanks, mate. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad, you know. Can't, can't complain. So- <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a bit. It's, it's, I know, I know, Joe is happy. I, I'm happy for Joe to be fair, but we're all. For happy. Us, it hasn't been the greatest of weeks, exactly. <laughs> apart from Palace, apart from Palace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. You're very unlucky at the weekend. Yeah, to be fair, very unlucky. I was really yeah. happy. We we played we played well, but of course, yeah. last minute goals once again haunt yeah. us. But yeah. <laughs> but speaking about the weekend, guys, let's get into it. Manchester <sighs> City lost to Spurs. All hell, Harry Kane. Guys, <laughs> with the title race back on. Oh, title race. I, I, I guess I can't... Look, you can say it's back on because in theory, I think it would be a bit foolish to say the title race isn't back on. When you look at the points, Liverpool are only, what, you know, six points away and there's still games in hand. So yeah. I, I feel like the title race is on. But let's put everything back into context. I'm sorry, Callum. But when it goes down to it, when it goes down to it, when it goes down to it, you look at City so far this season. Before the Tottenham game, they have lost. The last loss has come against us in October 2021. So one blip in four months doesn't really change many things for me. It's just a blip. And when it comes down to it, I think it's going to be more exciting. And I feel like there is a title race on. But my favourites personally... It hasn't changed. It's going to be City, but I think Liverpool are going to be asking some questions, which is what the Premier League wants as well. And it's going to make it a bit more exciting because we haven't really talked about a title race until this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's my, I, I don't think the title race was ever off, really. There were only really one random defeat away from the title race being back on with City, to be fair, because Liverpool have got a game in hand and Liverpool have got to play City as well. So Liverpool just needed City to slip up once. And it's happened. So Liverpool will be thinking, you know, we can do this. But I'm, you know, I, I agree with D. I think I think City will probably in the end just have too much. But thankfully for fans, neutral fans, it's it's you know it's good for us that we can actually watch a title race because you know we'll be we, everyone was just looking at the race for fourth, the relegation battle, which I wasn't paying too much attention to, um, but being forced <laughs> to pay attention to. But I was focusing on like, the battle for fourth and things like that. But now we can actually look at the top of the league again. And yeah, it's especially when Liverpool play City, that's going to be massive. That is going to be massive. And I think that's going to be you know a massive game in which way the pendulum swings. So, yeah. Cal, Cal, um, yeah. I know what you're going to say. I know you're going to say the title <laughs> race is back on. But realistically, are you guys going to go and win it? Go on, tell me that. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I'm, I'm a bit like Joe. I never thought the title race was off as such. What I will say, if I'm going to be completely transparent, is from the very moment the season started, I said that I think City would win the league. I know there's a lot of hype around Chelsea and Manchester United with the signings they bought, and a lot Mm. of people had Liverpool to finish fourth, or a few people had them to finish outside the top four. I always said Liverpool would finish second this season behind City. 
I still think that may be the case because I think City are one of those teams that can go on a run. I know they lost to Spurs, but they could conceivably go on a run where they win every game from now to the end of the season. They've done it before. That being said, though, Liverpool are always better when we're hunting as opposed to being chased, apart from 1920. Uh, the previous times where we've led at Christmas, etc., we've never won the league apart from 1920, whereas City, they are very good when they're in the lead. However, it's not often that it's been this close. And I think City slipping up at the weekend and obviously us getting close to them and us still having to play them makes the title race massive. And I'll be honest, without Liverpool over the last few years, this would have been a bit of a farmer's league because City would have completely dominated. So yeah. I know we we get some stick from fans and we do say some wild things as a, as a fan base sometimes, but... I think as a whole, I think the Premier League should be quite grateful for Liverpool at the moment because without us, it would be a one-horse race every season. Yeah. What about the referees as well, Callum? <laughs> you don't have to go there as well. <laughs> so, yeah, thank, thank you to Liverpool and the referees for causing this title race. But um, talking, of, talking about players a bit, who do you guys think have been the biggest underperformers so far this season? Oh, um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Maguire, and I know it's weird saying this at this point because he's just got a very good goal against uh, Leeds, and you know what is it with Maguire is celebrating like he's the coldest man on earth? By the way, every time he scores a goal, his celebrations are like he's Mbappe. I look, I, honestly, he yeah. gets a lot of stick for it. And I know people meme him, but I think fair play that lad has got some cojones on him to celebrate like that after the season he's had. But exactly that, he's had a poor season, and it, like I said, he does get memes, but you know. It, he was very, very good at Leicester and he's been very, very good for England in spells and he has been very, very good for Man United. I do think he's a very good defender. He just gets a lot of stick and I just think it is better than what he's done this season. So I'm going to go with Harry Maguire. Mm, I'm actually going to go for Lukaku. Um, Ooh, I think with the hype that he came in with, the fact that he was quote-unquote the missing piece of the puzzle for Chelsea, yes. the fact they didn't have a focal point last season... I think he, and again, I, I wasn't expecting him to come in and get, get 30 goals like many people assumed, but I was expecting him to have a bigger impact. Like even the game against you guys, D, at the weekend, he had what, two touches in the second half? Seven touches in total. I think one of them was offside. So oh, if you subtract mean, that, then I think six touches in nine minutes for football that's, ain't good. I mean, <laughs> two touches in the second half and one of them was kickoff. That's terrible. <laughs> like that, that, it can't actually get much worse than that. So, I mean, I think for me, it's Lukaku. I still think he can come good, but it's, it's again, it doesn't even seem like he wants to be there. So if his heart's not in it, then if I'm a Chelsea fan or if I'm on a board at Chelsea, I'm thinking we might as well cash in as soon as we can, try and recoup some of the money and then go for another striker, in my opinion. I'll be honest with you. When you're looking at the weekend's game and what we saw from Lukaku, everyone's talking about the seven touches. But you also have to look at the other side of things. What about the system that he's been put in? Is that the right system for Romelu Lukaku? Because when I was looking at the game, they weren't really feeding him as much. And of course, if you don't feed the player, how do you expect him to have touches? So I feel like to a certain extent, you can blame Romelu Lukaku because maybe he isn't playing good enough. But also, there's been talks about Thomas Tuchel and his attacking um, style of play. Does this style of play suit Chelsea or are they good enough going forward? So there has been question marks about the manager and his system. And I think it is fair to add that in place as well when talking about Lukaku. Because at times, he just hasn't got the service that he needs. And it's cost him. So for me, Lukaku is still a brilliant striker, but maybe not under Thomas Tuchel. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah fair enough. And, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, and, and another player that I want to quickly say, I want to, another player quickly I want to say is Harry Kane. He scored against City. I understand, I understand it was a brilliant performance. But so far this season, if you're talking about underperformers, one way or another, you can talk about the manager, you can talk about him and everything that went wrong. I said this before, seven goals for Harry Kane is poor. You expect way more from him. And I feel like now it's slightly ticking with Conte. He's going to return back to form and not be an underperformer, hopefully, and actually score them goals because... You know, we're talking about one of the best strikers in the Premier League, let alone in Europe. Like, it's, it's, he's a massive player. And so far this season, it's been a massive underperformer perform, for me because I truly believe in this guy. I think he's one of the best out there and yeah. he hasn't slotted them in. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think Harry Kane's going to come into form now, though. And who've they got next? Burnley. Of course, they've got Burnley next. Of course, they have. Just have a look. But let's focus on the bottom half of the table. Leicester are in 
I, I was going to say free fall, but they're not, I'm not quite free fall, but they're dropping like a bit of a stone. They haven't won for ages. You thought that, you know, maybe the performance at the weekend, you know, they might have got that win, um, but they didn't. So that's another game without a win. Do you think Brendan Rodgers is under pressure at Leicester? Because I know a couple of Leicester fans that have been tweeting things like, get him out, because that's how they speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's a very good so question. Good. Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Um, I, look, we talked about it beforehand as well. I just feel like if you were to sack Brendan Rodgers right now, that is reactionary and it shows everything yeah. that's wrong about football. We're talking about a manager that's recently just won the FA Cup for Leicester. And of course, as you mentioned, Joe, you're talking about Leicester being in the bottom half of the table. So that is not good enough for that side, considering that they've missed a couple places of Champions League every single season. So they've been aiming high and they're all the way low here. But if you put everything into context, they've had some massive injuries this season. You're talking about Johnny Evans being out for a long amount of time. Wesley, uh, you know, Fofana, he hasn't been involved. And you talk about Jamie Vardy as well being injured in, in, in a few games. So they have had a reason for their lack of form. But I think if you're going into next season and if this happens next season, then fair enough. But this season, in football, it's not two plus two as well. It's not as straightforward as that. You know, we've seen it with our own clubs as well. You do have these periods where you're, it's not going well for you. And I think it's simply as that. Give Brendan Rodgers time. He's proven for many years that he can do at Leicester. And if the same thing happens next season, then fair enough. But for now... Callum, I don't think you should do it. I think Leicester are caught between a rock and a hard place for all the reasons you just gave the... Yes, he won the FA Cup, but at the same time, look where they are on the table. And granted, they've had injuries, but at the same time, his selections have been very questionable as well. I mean, he has got Vestergaard there, but he continues to play Amati or Ndidi at centre-back. I think when he played against Liverpool, I think he played Ndidi at centre-back and he had Soyuncu on the bench. It's very, very weird from Brendan. And again, because I've seen him and been up close to him at Liverpool, I'm starting to see some of the traits at Leicester to which he showed at Liverpool. And it's it's like, when do you kind of have to bite the bullet? Because I don't think Leicester are in a position where they can give him another season or the rest of the season if he continues like this, because they are aiming for Europa. They are a Europa League team, in my opinion. And they've shown that. In, in theory, they should have been in the Champions League, but they just kept on missing out at the final stage. For me, I would probably give Brendan another five games maximum because they're not going to get relegated. But at the same time, I don't think they'll get Europa this season. I'd give him five games, see how it goes. And if it doesn't go well, then you may have to pull the plug. And for me, if I'm Leicester, I'm probably looking at Graham Potter. Interesting. Ooh, I would interesting. love that. I would love yeah, that. Yeah, just, yeah. just so he gets away from Brighton because I just think that <laughs> that guy is so talented and he's the only, he's a piece that if you take it, Dan Ashworth, who went to Newcastle, if you take him away as well, then Brighton are just going to return to the old Brighton. So yeah. I'm happy with that, actually. Sack Brendan Rodgers, bring in Graham Park. <laughs> I, I, think me, I, I think for me, I think for me, you said obviously give him five games, Callum. I think for me, just let it run its natural course. I think get him to the end of the season. If they haven't yeah. improved and they've just faded out, then yeah, I think maybe get rid of it. I'll tell you what, if that does happen, I'm calling it now, he'll be at Leeds next season. I think he'll be a good fit for Leeds. I think Bielsa Ooh. will walk at the end of the season and Brendan Rodgers at Leeds. Wow. <laughs> oh, I like shout. that take. Big shout. <laughs> I like that big take. shout. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, but that's what I think might happen because there's a lot of rumours about Bielsa potentially walking and then Brendan's obviously not doing well at Leicester and you know, there's a bit of a, a fractious between him and the fans. So I think, I think he could do with a fresh start and Leeds is a big club. That he, that he can do very well at. Fair mm. enough. So to flip the coin on your question, D, which is who's been the biggest underachiever? Joe, I'm going to come to you first. Who do you think has been the biggest overachiever so far this season as a player? Uh, I'm going to go with Jacob Ramsey simply because Good he's coming shout. and he's been class. Wow. And I don't mean it in a sense of I think he's crap by saying he's overachieving. I just mean mm. it in the sense of I didn't expect that much from him. But he's come in and now, all right, I know fans like to get carried away. I'm suddenly dusting off my passport after beating Brighton this weekend, after being in relegation <laughs> trouble all weekend, uh, all, all season. Um, and Villa fans are now saying, oh, he's, he, you know, he's showing better signs than what Grealish did at that age. They'll know more than me, to be fair. And Villa fans, if you're watching in the comments, let us know how you feel Jacob Ramsey's doing. But for me, yeah, he's been sensational since he's come in. I didn't expect anything from him. He's, he's mm. still very, very young. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with Ramsey because he's looked class. He really has. That's this shout. Mm, this Steve, the, for my one, for my one, it might sound a bit weird because not many people have spoken about him. But you know, there, there's people talking about 
uh, Bowen and you got Emil Smith Rowe. But Emmanuel Dennis at Watford, when considering where they've been all season long and what he's oh. been doing, without him there. I don't think they've got any hope. Right now, they brought in Roy Hodgson, but Emmanuel Dennis has been helping them out all season long. And we've seen that certain players, when you're playing against, when you're playing in a club in relegation battles, it can be a struggle. The morale is low, but he's been carrying them and he's been carrying them that much that they didn't even let him go to the Afghans. So, you know, it's, it's, he's, been, he's been absolutely brilliant for them. And I feel like Emmanuel Dennis hasn't been spoken about as much as, you know, other players that I mentioned. That's too, I'll be honest, guys. Two great shouts. D, I'm surprised you didn't go for Conor Gallagher because that's the. Oh, nah, he's, he's, he's not. He's not. He's not You know, he's not overachiever. You know, he's he's that talented player, man. He's not I think I think he has overachieved. Like he's a very talented player, but considering he came to to Palace as a little bit of an unknown entity, didn't know where he was going to play, didn't know how often he was going to play. I think he's been brilliant, and. He was a player that you were probably missing at the weekend. Obviously, the loan yeah. agreement means he can't play against his parent club. But Gallagher in a team against Chelsea, it could have been a very different game and a different result. So for me, I fully see where you're both coming from. Dennis is a shout. Um, Joe, who do you, you mention again? Jacob Ramsey. Ramsey. Ramsey is a great shout, especially since Coutinho's come in as well. But for me, I, and D, I'm surprised you didn't mention him, but I'm, I'm going Conor Gallagher. So you <laughs> had to mention him. I just waited for someone else to go, you know, go ahead. Because I do it every humble, single week. Yeah, so, so for the I'll first do... time on the show, <laughs> D hasn't given Conor Gallagher propaganda and then someone else has done it anyway. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, someone else had to do it. So I just, I thought I'll wait for it because surely one of you are going to say Conor Gallagher. <laughs> but talking about retro and talking about the greatest of all time, I'm not talking about the greatest Premier League player, but greatest Premier League strike of all time. This is not going to be easy, but let me know. Let's be. Let's start with you, Joe. Who is the greatest Premier League striker? Uh, for me, the best out and out striker. The best out and out. Just Salah will be in the conversation. I'm sure Callum, you'll have a debate on that. But I don't I'm feel not, he's I've, out and I've out got, striker. I haven't gotten in the combo yet. Not for me yet. It's, it's got to be Henri. It's, it's got to be Thierry Henri. I don't think. I don't think there's anyone else. Like, I genuinely believe out and out strikers. Yes, Aguero comes close. Shearer comes close. Thierry Henry was just special. He was easily the best. And there's some of the things he could do. There's them goals against Man United, the one where he flicked it up and then just booted it. And there's a long range effort as well. He was sensational. He had pace, he had power, he had finishing, he had strength. There's nothing that that guy couldn't do. He even threw the ball in the net against Ireland once. <laughs> Cal, who are you going with? You can't say Henry. You can't say Henry. Even if he was on your list, you can't say him. There's other strikers. Go on, give me one. I, all right, so caveat it, it would have been on reef for me but if i'm gonna have an argument <laughs> i'm gonna probably put aguero or shearer but for the sake of it i'll go aguero and i'll leave you a shearer d the reason i'm going aguero, <laughs> the, the reason I'm going aguero his goals per minute were fantastic um yeah. he came to man city and before he came to man city man city were knocking on the door of being title challenges he went there and he solidified them and he would score goals against everyone and he'd score all types of goals. He'd score headers, he'd score tappings, he'd score long ranges, goals where he'd dribble through teams. I think he would have got even more goals had he not been as injury prone as he was. Mm -hmm. And obviously he's had to unfortunately retire due to situation with his heart and stuff like that. But for me, he'll go down as one of, easily one of the best players to play in the league. But as a striker, for me, he's top three. Yeah, 100% agree with you. And I feel like it's one of the cases where just because he's recently left City and the Premier League that maybe people will appreciate him like in five to ten years time. When you're looking mm. back at the greatest Premier League forwards, so you're going to be seeing Aguero thinking, wow, like he's among these guys. And I've watched him play and I've seen him do all these crazy stuff. I think Aguero just, as you said, collecting the ball in the box. He was a phenomenal finisher. And mm. the way that he done that, as you said, whilst having all these injuries, uh, injury problems as well at times. He, he, yeah, for me, he has to be Aguero. But if it wasn't Aguero, there is only one right answer, and that is Thierry Henry. I'm not going to say Alan Shearer, because Ooh. I'll be honest with he, you. He, you see that, Joe? He wouldn't even let me <laughs> yeah. take Henry. <laughs> you can't have it. I'm not going to say Henry, but I'm going to say it as well. <laughs> no, Joe can say Alan Shearer because, you know, he was closer to your size than I was. But for me, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say Thierry Henry. But I agree with you, Callum. That's a very good shout as well. 
Yeah. Fair oh, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, all that's left is for you guys in the comments to, to chime in. So that has been episode 11. Please do like the video. Please do subscribe to the FanVet channel if you haven't already. And obviously leave your comments for all the topics we've discussed. Joe, tell the people where they can find you to support you, please, bro. Yeah, so I'm Joe. You can find me on Twitter at Joe Tom Red, or you can find the page on all the social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and even TikTok with at Turfcast Podcast. Um, Joe, are there dances on your TikTok? Yes or no? Um, no, no, there isn't. There's, there, was one of me, there was one of me pretending to cry when we went bottom of the league table, but I've not done any dancing yet. I'm not sure I'll, I'm not sure I'll go that far with it. Well, guys, you know what to do in the comments. We need Joe dancing on TikTok. Um, <laughs> tell you what, tell you what, if we stay up, I'll do a dance. I'll do a dance. Yeah, yeah, you have to. There you have to. You have to. Um, and who, what about yourself, D? Where can the people find you and support you? Um, so at the Palace and also at Back of the Nest, um, more Conor, Conor Gallagher propaganda um, coming through as the weeks go by. I think we're changing the propaganda from Conor Gallagher to Elise. That's a new trend. Um, so yeah, if you want to head over to Back of the Nest, um, lots of Palace content. And Joe will also be coming on our channel to give a little preview ahead of the game. So yeah, head over to Back of the Nest if you want to uh, find us for us. Great stuff. And you can find me on Team Coppish on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. No, Joe, before you are. <laughs> you to We're waiting I on you, waiting. Joe. I was waiting then to see if any, uh, you were going to say TikTok. <laughs> when Joe does his dance, we'll do a dance on TikTok as well. So you're um, going to do a dance coming second in the league? <laughs> Come on, <man. laughs> but, but no, it's been an absolute pleasure chopping up with you guys. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Once again, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Leave your comments below. Until we see you next time, take care.